Hi guys, I'm at the old building at work now. Uh, we just moved to a new building and we've been, uh, all the stuff that we don't want to move to the new building has been left here. I've been, I've been given the go ahead to uh, scrap this old Thermotron uh, thermal chamber. This is basically a uh, combination oven and uh, refrigerator or freezer. I think this one's ready to go from minus 70 degrees Celsius down up to 200 degrees. Uh, decent sized space inside. You can see the refrigeration coils back there. And there's some temperature and humidity sensors. I believe this also has uh, humidity control. It's a really, really old one. It's not worth fixing. The refrigeration system broke a few years ago. Uh, they came out to fix it, but it, so they decided it wasn't worth it, so we removed the gas. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, you know, ancient control panel, not computerized at all. It's this old mechanical timer to cycle it on and off for uh, doing temperature cycling tests. Oh. The windshield wiper doesn't work. Um, we've ducted it out to a duct that ran over to a fan that used to be there to, to keep this room from getting too hot. Um, you know, to pull this cover off, start taking parts out of it. Well, it's also got a uh, 208 to 240 volt transformer that we'll be worth keeping. And final screw. Oh, maybe not the final screw. There we go. You know, this uses a two-stage refrigeration system with uh, two compressors, two separate refrigerant circuits. Uh, one uses a very high pressure gas, the other uses a lower pressure gas. The first stage basically cools the condenser of the second stage to allow the second stage to get to extremely low temperatures. I think it would be very difficult to get minus 70 out of a single refrigeration stage. Let's see what else does this have. There's cutouts, pressure cutouts here. Uh, someone's written 4R404A, so that's one of the refrigerants. I think they both use different types. I think this is for the humidity control to inject water. Um, yeah, water must come in one of these pipes. Here, there's some other drip tank thing here, float. There's the motor for the uh, fan that circulates air through the chamber. Yeah, let's start pulling these out. I'll have to make sure they get all the gas is out, and we can uh, start removing these compressors. And here are the accumulators. Not sure if there's one for each circuit, or if there's both are used for one. Um, coil's somewhat dirty. I wonder if that's part of the reason why this thing died. Yeah, this was the same. Anyone who adjusts this valve must tighten packing gland and system not with the proper wrench. Just open these valves very carefully. No, that one's doing nothing. This one. Tiny little hiss there. Oh, that one seems to be out as well. So they did recover it as they said they did. Okay, these valves are now open. Nothing came out of them either, so I'm now sure this is completely discharged. Let's start cutting lines out and getting compressors. Um, I don't, unfortunately, I don't, didn't bring a big enough wrench to take that off, so I'll just have to cut the line. Let me also grab this sight glass, and there's probably not really much else worthwhile in this, unfortunately. Maybe that uh, service port. Actually, it looks like this whole uh, unit here is a condensing unit, so I'm going to try to remove that all in one. Got all the bolts out. 
uh, cut this line. Let's see if we can pull it out. It's moving a bit. I wonder if there's something else in the front. I'll continue doing this. Just pull the back panels off this and start to see why this thing may have failed. Well, this is just everything is corroded horribly. So this was sitting in water continuously, it's condensed water. Yeah, there's the, that looks like the uh, main heat exchanger between the two refrigerant circuits here. There's two TXVs. I don't know if they're uh, that one's that one's R502. This one's also R502, so it looks like there's two, uh, use two for some reason. Um, there's some, it's probably a solenoid valve here. Um, yeah, there's the bulb for that one on this line, going down. This line has the other one, so I wonder if they converted this system to be a uh, single stage at some point. Because both refrigerant circuits run uh, TXVs that are designed for the same gas. That seems a little bit strange. I wonder if the um, exchanger is hooked up. Uh, yes, it is actually. Could there be a third compressor? No, I don't see one. Or these TXVs are being used with a different gas. Okay, it looks like this uh, compressor of the condenser unit is free now. Can uh, get it out of here. Let's see, it's pretty heavy. Make sure it's clear everything. And oh, one line I forgot. Let's just snip that. Everything uh, clear now. There we go. Let's see if we can. Yeah, how do I put this down? Okay, that came up pretty cleanly. Oh, that's what that's been connected to. They added a little extra radiator and or heat exchanger in front. And now for the next compressor. Okay, that's out. And we've got this pipe cut. Yeah. See, it looks like this was. It looks like this is two stage. Because this this uh, this compressor a suction line. The light on here. Connected up to this accumulator, which I believe stores the refrigerant, which can't be uh, compressed into a liquid at room temperature. It runs it would run at too high a pressure, so they just store all the charge needed as a gas in an accumulator. Okay, second compressor is out, along with this thing, which is maybe starting gear of some sort. Some sort. This one also has the same thing. Uh, also, I found the manual. And it has a uh, schematic of the refrigeration system. Um, let's see. Yeah, R13, R502. There's the condensing unit. Uh, let's see. That must be the accumulator. Uh, this one on the on the side. So it had that uh, expansion tube and this, I think it was some sort of valve thing in the way, in through it. Now, yeah, there's one TXV expanding through the heat exchanger. Yeah, from the compressors, condensed, I guess that must be the, probably the accumulator. Yeah, through the TXV and out, you can also 
maybe that's a valve, dehumidification. Well, that's probably to get a slight amount of cooling to uh, dehumidify the chamber when it's in heat mode. What else do we have? Yeah, there's the high, the low temperature circuit, which goes to the very small condensing coil to desuperheat the gas. Then through the heat exchanger, where it uh, condenses in the cold uh, evaporator of the first stage. Then the gas goes. That looks like a filter dryer. Goes through an expansion valve through the main coil inside the chamber. Then back to the compressor. I think this. No. That is the. That's another TXV. What is that for? I'm thinking that's actually a, not a TXV, that's a bypass valve. Yeah, there's a bypass, or do they bypass? No, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's dumping liquid from the uh, output of the condenser straight into the, uh, back into the compressor, it's strange. There's also the second circuit from, oh yeah, the, the first stage also has some coils in the uh, main evaporator as well. And both of them use uh, expansion valve metering. Okay, I think the last thing we're going to do is grab the uh, two accumulators, and that should be it pretty much. Oh, and no, let's not forget the uh, transformer up there. Well, this cord is completely ripped, it's absolutely stiff, it's almost like a branch. The insulation is all cracking, so let's take that for scrap copper. I'm going to grab these uh, solenoid valves, this one and that one, and I'll probably also grab the uh, heat exchanger as well. That looks to be in good condition. And apart from that, I think that is everything useful off of this thing. I wonder what this thing is. That must be... I think this thing is actually a humidifier's heater. It's probably a heating element in that boils water to make steam that would go up that pipe into the chamber. It's probably not really that worthwhile. Those uh, accumulators are out. And maybe I'll grab the safety pressure switches as well. And that sight glass. This definitely is quite horribly rusted, but Looks like the uh, heat exchanger might be okay. Let's try to get that out. And this should, if you have any luck, come out. Oh, looks like that, this tube is going to get in way. Or it's split somewhere. this. Get that out of here. And one couple screws and that should come out. Just opened up the front here. Nice big uh, control board here and a very nice board full of relays and a big transformer here. I think this is 240, 480 to 120. Big contactors, fuses, very nice wiring. Oh, we're leaking some water back there. Yeah, did I cut it off? Oh, that's, that's, the, that's the water for, for the uh, humidifier. And in the Just chamber, here's the, mm, yeah, here's the evaporator coil. Must be that small coil we saw, the dehumidification coil there. Uh, there's the electric heater, fan, uh, and I think this is a wet bulb thermostat to measure the uh, temperature. That's what that water, one of the water, th water tank thing up here is feeding. We have to go pull this uh, board and cut up, and get as much of the wiring or scrap as possible.
Okay, I think everything useful is out of this chamber now. Here's the control uh, relay board, and there's all the scrap copper. I think that was quite, quite a bit of good stuff on that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.